This fantasy football best ball draft edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Get started today and you'll get a risk-free bet up to $500. Terms and conditions apply. Get the details at wynnbet.com and download the app today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap, America's number one app to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit and receive up to $500 in bonus cash. That's PropSwap.com, promo code SGP. We're also brought to you by Coors Light. When you're sweating out your bets, make sure to grab a mountain cold refreshment. Coors Light is cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged. It's literally made to chill. We're also brought to you by the SGPN app. The NBA Finals free roll contest locks at the end of the week. So make sure to get your entry in for a free shot at winning $1,000. Just enter SGPN in the App Store or Google Play Store. Ooh, welcome, everyone, to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer Dog? Best ball, fantasy football. It's, I feel like we've gone through a little bit of a drought. Yes. Uh, I don't. When when is the last time we talked football, Ryan? Well, we just did uh, talk football with Joe Theismann, Ooh. and that episode will be uh, a Sunday night post uh, or Monday a.m. So uh, stay tuned for that. And we're going to be doing another uh, NBA podcast live after the game tonight. Hello. So much content, Kramer. You're on the clock with the number one pick in our live fantasy football best ball draft. What did you do? Or uh, what are you about to do? I'm not going to log in. I'll just let the, the Christian McCaffrey situation happen. <laughs> I got too many things going on over here. I gotta, I want, I'm trying to show the audience what's going on. So we'll, we'll get there in a second. But, yeah, I'm gonna, why wouldn't I take McCaffrey? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I guess if I am in the number one spot, I'll probably begrudgingly take Christian McCaffrey, but I'm worried about the injuries. Uh, I just think, you know, some uh, Christian McCaffrey's not made to last this long, and we always talk about that. What was it like that 400 carry mark where guys really fall off the cliff? I feel like this could be the year for Christian McCaffrey to fall off the cliff again. I love Chuba Hubbard, uh, <laughs> you know, in a, in, I, I a, think- in a backup role. And I think, you know, you, you, I like that you're – I mean, I'm high on, on Hubbard, too, as a bullet. But I, I think you can only get exposure to McCaffrey if you take him first. And so I, I, have, I have very little exposure. Sean, you're on the clock. I know. I am. I'm going to go off the grid here. I'm picking number four. I'm going to reach, and I'll probably regret doing it. But give me Austin Eckler. There's very few running backs wow. uh, that I feel great about in wow. the first round. I'm, I'm leaning into Austin Eckler, Ryan. I didn't see that one coming. I'm trying to mix it up. You know, the, the, the best part about these best ball drafts is you're warming up for the fantasy yep. football season. we got a ton of fantasy football coverage coming at you this year. And uh, what better way to just try out some different ranking strategies, some different picking strategies. I, I just like the idea of Eckler. I, I don't know what it is about him. I think the volume is going to be there. He's super reliable. So Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Derek Henry, Austin Eckler. Again, I, I throw a monkey in the – uh, in the, in the, uh, or a, a monkey a wrench. A wrench, a monkey wrench, a monkey wrench, Austin Eckler, then Kelsey goes, then Kamara, then Jonathan Taylor, then Saquon Barkley already with that giant red Q next to his name. Zeke goes after that. Kramer, you're not going to be picking for a while. What do you expect to get at the end of the second round? I mean, I have to walk away with a pass catcher and probably a running back. That's probably the strategy at that point. Maybe I, one of the tight ends falls to me mm. who uh, I don't I don't think any, maybe I get a walk. I, I don't know. I think, again, I haven't really picked from the top spot too often, so I'm curious. It, it will probably give me a different team, which is, you know, as you know, Sean, good for the uh, the equity that we're trying to build up in these players. Zeke goes, and Tyreek Hill goes, Stefan Digg goes, and uh, yeah, we're about to uh, wrap round one here. Not, nothing too crazy. DeAndre Hopkins sneaks into the end of the first round. I want to be at the end of the first round. I don't want to almost be forced into taking one of these running backs in the first round because I feel like a lot of these running backs you can build a pretty good case against. After DeAndre Hopkins goes, the the uh, Snake Wells username comes back with Calvin Ridley, who also has a question mark uh, next to his name, opening a night against the Eagles there. And Calvin Ridley, yeah, I, I mean, I'm high on him, but not, I don't know. I don't know about second round. That feels a little high. Nick Chubb goes. Cam Akers goes. A lot of people are making a case for Cam Akers to be a first-round pick. Are you one of those people, Kramer? Yeah, I think, I think Cam Akers is a guy – 
you know, if you want to be shocking in your draft, I think it's grabbing Cam Akers earlier. Just because if you look at that opportunity he has, the ceiling is quite high. Now, you can talk about how he might get injured. Sure, Daryl Henderson, pretty cheap handcuff. Uh, you can you can talk about a lot of things, but the opportunity is there, and we know that that offense can make a running back successful. Now, I, I think it's always hard. It's air, right? Cam Akers, we saw some games, but we haven't seen him do it for a full season, so it's always scary to take that kind of player. Aaron Jones go, Najee Harris goes. And I can't remember, uh, you know, again, he's getting some first-round steam as well, Najee Harris, with the volume, uh, you know, uh, people expect him to get the rock a ton. I, I'll be honest, I don't – this is a confusing one to me. Well, and especially in a, uh, a full-point PPR, because I don't see him being involved a ton in the pass game. I think their idea is, oh, Big Ben's getting old and they're just going to pound the rock with Najee Harris, and they, and they spent a first-round pick on him. That means they – they like him. Devontae Adams goes. Joe Mixon goes. Patrick Mahomes goes. So I can take A.J. Brown, who's uh, pretty interesting here, or I can go Antonio Gibson. Uh, those are some of the uh, recommended picks here. Justin Jefferson on the board. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, – you know what? Yeah, let's do it. A.J. Brown. I don't have a lot of shares of A.J. Brown. You're probably going like to want shares of him. Like yeah. the situation. Again, people are making a case for him to be a first-round pick. Um, you what? know, And the fact that Julio Jones comes there, does that take away from A.J. Brown, or does that create more opportunities? I'm definitely more in the camp of I don't think it, I don't think it helps him as much as some people are saying. Uh, that being said, I, I told you I would consider taking a tight end here. If there was one here, I think Darren Waller still – he should be a second round pick, I think, with the volume he's going to see in that offense. Once again, we know what Derek Carr likes to be. With this next pick, I'm very torn because on on one hand, I was really hoping to get a, a receiver I think is a, of higher quality, but I'm going to take a stab here and go McCl Terry McLaurin, mm. maybe a little early, but I love the upside here and I love my ability to now tag him with a stack later on. Yeah, Fitz get Ryan, Magic Fitz a little Magic, cheaper. And uh, now we, we get some Fitz Magic talk on the Joe Theismann podcast as well. I wanted to ask you, Sean. So what's your take on taking Wall? I, it was Waller versus Kittle. I had an opportunity to take Kittle. Uh, Are you passing on the on the tight end there altogether? Yeah, I would. But again, I, I think there's some deeper sleepers in the tight end area. Uh, I mean, I'm fine with you taking Kittle as much as I've given. I didn't uh, take Kittle. I no, took I'm Waller. saying I, oh. I would have been fine. I, Waller to me, again, it's just investing in Derek uh, Carr is always. It's catches it's, though. Like he gets so many fucking catches in that offense. I just drafted Keenan Allen, Ryan. So now I'm setting up, um, going in on this Chargers offense. It's going to be interesting. Again, they lose, uh, you know, their coach. They bring in a defensive-minded coach. That could, that could could maybe hurt the offense. Our buddy from PFF, he was all over Justin Herbert being a regression candidate. That but <laughs> I, I'm still kind of high on him. He, Justin Herbert passed the eye test for me, and now I'm setting myself up to I really need a stack uh, for Herbert. That'll be really fun to kind of have this much of a share of a, of a chargers offense. That should be pretty solid. We'll see. I mean, there's still some questions on there on the offensive side of the ball and Keenan Allen getting up there has had injury issues, bit of a risk, but this is best ball. I like to play a little fast and loose after uh, Keenan Allen goes, CD lamb goes, Michael Thomas goes, we're talking NFL, Ryan. Oh, I like oh, that. There you go. The <laughs> football all the way up. The National Football League. We're going to get down on the NFL. We were at the Wynn Casino, Ryan, a beautiful Las Vegas. Got in on the Eagles over six and a half wins. The Eagles to win the Super Bowl. You don't need to be in Las Vegas to bet with the win. All you got to do is go to winbet.com, W-Y-N-N, bet.com. Download the app and Get a, get a little action, a little bonus action, sweet deposit bonus up to $500. Terms and conditions apply, but make sure you head over to winbet.com. Generous odds, some of the best parlay numbers you guys can find. Sweet little parlay boost. Spin the wheel for a bonus parlay boost. Are you kidding me? Winbet, they got it all. If you're getting in on the NFL, the MLB, the NHL, whatever sport it is, win bet has you covered. Just go to W Y N N B E T L F G. How does that not get you pumped? 
84 days, I think. Update the board. Michael Thomas goes. Mike Evans, Antonio Gibson, uh, Allen Robinson, the second, DeAndre Swift, Kyle Pitts, on jo- Dobbins. It's Josh Dobbins? J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins. Maybe, maybe the J stands first name for Josh. Josh. It doesn't look like a Josh to me. But uh, another Josh does go, and the uh, Josh Jacobs, David Montgomery. We're here uh, back at the top of the fourth round. I got a running back, Eckler, and two receivers, A.J. Brown, Keenan Allen, feeling pretty strong. Kyle Pitts went in there as well. And it's interesting to see DeAndre Swift drop here towards the end of the third round. He was a guy that was way higher. Kramer, we were all over Jamal Williams early in these yeah. best ball. Um, you know why? Because we're gut handicapped. Yes. We're exactly. not nerds looking at numbers from last year. We're seeing Dan Campbell. We're hearing chewing kneecaps. Anthony and- Lynn just came out with a love letter, basically, to Jamal Williams. If you're a DeAndre Swift fantasy owner, you got to be shaking in your boots right now. Because, they, I mean, they and Anthony Lynn is a guy who tells you exactly what he's going to do. Absolutely love it. Julio Jones goes. Um, Cooper goes. Amari Cooper. Now I have a, I could I could go Tannehill or Justin Herbert. I think what I'm going to do is let the QB situation fall to me. Let someone draft yep. Justin Herbert, or may, maybe if he falls right to me. Um, and Sean, Josh Josh Allen just went. And just you know, I'm sure you're looking at the board and seeing the available players and really hoping. Do you have a running back yet, Sean? No, I don't. Hmm. Oh, I do. I have I have uh, Austin Eckler. My That's buddy right. Miles Sanders is sitting there, sitting still right. available. Chris Carson, who the more I the more I do these drafts, the higher I get on Chris Carson. In that situation where clearly, for whatever reason, the Seattle Seahawks are uh, it seem like they're going to dedicate themselves to running the ball, and it seems like a less competitive backfield than previous years in Seattle. It's a pure volume situation, and it's best ball, and you know Chris Carson is going to have some games where he gets twenty five carries, scores a couple touchdowns, and puts up twenty plus points for you. Ryan, this is why we can't invite the listeners to these leagues because someone just drafted Miles Sanders. Sorry, and you—I mean, you pointed it out. There was no accident that Miles Sanders. You threw him out there, and and then he gets drafted. Maybe I will My end bad. up getting a uh, Chris Car- Chris Carson, Chris Godwin goes. Who again? Also another guy I'm high on, but I, I do like um, you know the idea of taking Antonio Brown in best ball, especially because Godwin and you, Evans and their injury history and Tom Brady's love affair for Antonio Brown, the case to be made for Antonio Brown. You are is very on the simple. clock, Sean. I know. I was I was vamping. So now I got Eckler, Chris Carson, AJ Brown, Keenan Allen. Nice balanced approach here. Kramer, you're coming up. End of the uh, hot and heavy. End of the fourth round here, I and can then tell you'll you, be starting the fifth. This might be the first share I have of all three of the players I've drafted so far. Wow. And the board drastically changed from the point when I first looked at it to now. Uh, DJ Moore is a guy. Is this is it okay to stack multiple Carolina Panthers here? Feels silly because I'm going to walk away with DJ Moore, and I'm going to feel completely happy walking away with Cooper Cup. Again, we like the or I like the offense, Matt Stafford. I, I like the upside of these receivers. Perhaps the one thing preventing me from going full bore on a Cam Akers earlier in the first round. Ooh, Kareem Hunt just went. Adam Thielen uh, goes as well. I'm on the clock here, Ryan. Some of the uh, quarterbacks are starting to pop their head up. I don't know if I'm. These rankings are interesting. Yeah, I was. Uh, I I think. Uh, I started tinkering uh, with my rankings coming soon to sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Oh, yeah. Rankings and projections. Uh, but I do like how in DraftKings you can update them so that the, the default rankings don't lead you astray because some of these, they have Dak Prescott way too high. They just Their rankings are very intriguing to me. Oh, I didn't get my Jamar Chase uh, pick in. It, it threw me Kyler Murray. Oh, no. Which uh, I'm fine with. Oh, I'm my. fine with. I have no shares of uh, Kyler Murray. But again, the rushing upside, he's saying he doesn't want to rush You get much. so upset with me when I tell you you're on the clock. And then you fuck it up when I don't tell you. No, I, I knew I was on the clock. I was, I was, str- I mean, it's not like I forgot I was on the clock. I was trying to literally click uh, the draft Jamar Chase before it went in. So. Was it like the, like there's a little drama situation in the war room? Yeah. I mean, we were going back and forth fighting about the card. You got Howie Roseman getting left hanging. Oh, man. So after I take uh, Kyler Murray, kind of on accident, uh, Dakota Prescott goes, <laughs> Travis Etienne goes, Jamar Chase goes uh, now. 
Sometimes I get a quarterback, two running backs, two receivers, pretty, uh, pretty decent spot. I'm feeling I can just go BPA rest of the way, or maybe I, maybe I even just snag a quarterback here coming up, ensure a stack and then just go, you know, pass catchers from there. Lamar Jackson's gone. Who he's a guy who I own zero shares of. Yeah, it, which is a little scary. You probably shouldn't have zero shares of Lamar Jackson. He's no. definitely had some seasons before that would make it uh, worthwhile to own a share. But at the same time, I think I'm in the same boat as you. I, I just don't find myself taking Lamar. I, I don't know what it is about Lamar Jackson. He's a good fantasy player. I just can't like. In this year, he's valuable. Yeah. There are guys going ahead of him, and very, uh, you know. I mean, Dak Prescott uh, ahead of him. Would I mean, it surprise Lamar Jackson rushing upside alone? If he was the number one fantasy quarterback this year, would it surprise you? No, no, not at all. I mean, it, I mean, certainly with that rushing upside, he could be the number one fantasy player. Period. Uh, so after Lamar, uh, Mark Andrews goes, Miles Gaskin goes, Odell Beckham Jr. goes, which that is, uh, I don't know what the hell. I that saw someone. I saw someone touting that like he hasn't been healthy in a while. Blah blah blah. He's really good. <laughs> I mean, good luck. I, I'll, I'm sure I'll end up with a couple where he falls way too far, and I end up taking him because I no. remember those years in the Giants. But uh, very unlikely for me to have more than a like a percent or two. What's your goal for best ball teams? I I, I set mine at 250. <laughs> 250 entries? Across all platforms. Oh T, T. Higgins goes. Kenny Galladay goes, Ryan. So this is round six. That's uh, pretty high. Uh, Javante Williams goes. DJ Chark goes, who's a fun uh, uh, player there. Brandon Ayuk goes. Chase Edmond goes. Justin Herbert goes. Oh, no. What happened? The video cut out? I don't know. All right. No, I think we're good. We're good. Justin he recovered. Herbert. He is off the board. What are you? What are you going to do, quarterback, Ryan? Uh, are you going to keep kicking it down the can? Because I was going. <laughs> I'm on pick pick sixty nine, which is nice. Well, around the outside, he's in there. I and, I, and I probably would have went Herbert if he was available, but he's not. Oh, the Kyler pick is going to haunt you. <laughs> Honestly, I, I have a I have a nice situation. I can go cheap quarterbacks all around. Ooh, I'm gonna go. Uh, mm, I'm gonna go a little bit of Homer here, and I'm gonna take uh, Devonta Smith. Feels pretty good there. I, I mean, I, I think especially in a full point PPR, he is just gonna he's gonna rack up a ton of catches. Robbie Anderson goes, who I like, especially in best ball because you can get Darnold so late and and that nice cheap stack for the Carolina Panthers who. Again, could have a really, really bad defense and, yeah. and really be playing from behind in a big way. All right. I mean, I, I think I got to do it. Um, we see what's going on in the running back situation out in San Francisco. To me, Trey Sermon is, mm. is becoming more and more valuable. I needed a second running back. Makes all the sense. I really want to stare down the barrel of taking the uh, – you know what? Let's just – you know, I can't do it with Cortland Sutton there. But James Robinson, it, I just don't understand him falling further and further from yeah. Travis Etienne's value. I think people are overthinking this. Uh, he ran some receiver shit in OTAs. Like, I get it. He's probably going to be on the field as a receiver. But I, I don't know if that makes him two rounds better than James Robinson, a guy who we saw perform at the NFL level. Ryan, I can't help myself. I did it. I drafted Jalen Hurts. Pick 76. You, you had a plan for your stacks, and you completely went <laughs> no, off well, the rails. I found a Devonta Smith. You I just found took two quarterbacks in the first seven rounds, Sean. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, uh, both who are running quarterbacks with massive upsides. Oh, man. Leonard Fournette uh, went right before me. So, yeah, sorry. I missed out on Leonard Fournette, Ryan. I, 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 I need some more running backs. I don't understand who's taking Leonard Fournette this early. No offense if you were the guy that just took him, but that, that's a horrible pick. Chase Claypool goes. Oh, man. I, I got to stop taking Cortland Sutton. I have too many shares of him. <laughs> he is fun, and especially if the Deshaun Watson uh, gets his wish and he ends mouth. up in, in, in Denver. I mean, all these shares you've been squirreling away, Ryan, of Deshaun Watson. He's going to be the <laughs> Dogecoin of best ball. In all seriousness, though, like these uh, – Corlin Sutton is maybe because of COVID, but guys who missed all of last year – it feel it feels a little bit like we forgot how good Cortland Sutton looked. Yeah. Before, like, I understand falling because the injury, but he got injured early, right? It was before the season, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, Sean? 
So he's had a lot yeah. of time. And, and for him to drop into the seventh round, I get the quarterback situation's murky. Even if it's not Deshaun Watson or Aaron Rodgers, I still like this guy to score eight to ten touchdowns. So after uh, I took Hertz, uh, Claypool goes, Mostert goes, Juju, Smith, Schuster off the board, Debo Samuel, Tyler Boyd, James Robinson does get picked, Kramer. So uh, all that is uh, good to go. Oh man, it is uh, it is hot out there. Oh. It is. I mean, even in LA, of course, it was super hot in Vegas. It was like one fifteen. Been making a ton of small talk with people about the heat. Perfect way to cool off. I'll tell you, a nice refreshing beverage, aka a Rocky Mountain refreshment, Coors Light. It's literally made to chill. I mean, they have mountains on the packaging, and if it's blue, it's ready to go. It's cold. Ready to chill. Uh, much like Ben Simmons from the free throw line, it is ice cold. And, you know, sometimes you find yourself, whether you're super hot, really stressed out, you need to hit the reset button and chill. Coors Light is the perfect way to do that. Crack open a nice cold Coors Light. Uh, it's the one I choose when I need to unwind. So when you want to hit the reset button, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado, and as always, celebrate responsibly. Dealing with the heat wave? Just fire up the old Drizzly Instacart, get Coors Light delivered to your house? Are you kidding me? I mean, uh, certain things got good during the pandemic. Yes. And food delivery, beer delivery. The the the, the enablement that was created <laughs> to not let you leave your house. I remember, uh, Sean, I watched one of those documentaries on like a like a super fat person, like my 600-pound story or whatever, and the guy would order delivery, and the delivery guy would know to go around back and put the food in a bucket. He'd, oh, he'd, yes. I've seen the yeah, bucket my, guy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you think he's getting that kind of personalized service with Drizzly <laughs> and Instacart? I hope so, for his sake. Uh, maybe, maybe that's why people are so uh, on board. All Where right. are we at? Uh, I'm coming up here. Pick 93. I'll let you know when you're on the clock so you don't miss your pick this time. Uh, I was I was looking. <laughs> Sean, you were on the clock. Thank you. Michael Gallup just goes. Don't have to deal with that. Running back, uh, Melvin Gordon. I don't want anything to do with him. Mm. What about Damian Harris? You know I like Damian Harris. I mean, if you don't take him, I will. Yeah. Uh, I think just the opportunity. We saw the way they liked him. He... he uh, he, lo- he looked like a fun upside potential. He's going to have big games. I'll tell you that. With that offense. Yeah, I pulled the trigger. I took Damian Harris. And, uh, yeah, no, I think you nailed it. He's he's a big upside spot. And you never know truly with the Patriots. But I, I think there's I think there's something there. They oh, like him enough. And I'm on the clock. Now. You're on the clock, Ryan. While you're making your pick, uh, Michael Carter uh, has been gone. Ronald Jones. I took Damian Harris. Michael Gallup. Mike Williams. Tom Brady. Jalen Waddell. Logan Thomas, Jarvis Landry, Ryan Tannehill, Russell Gage, Dallas Goddard, uh, Hollywood Brown, James Robinson, all off the board here. Uh, Aaron Rodgers just went. Is that uh, you, That Kramer? was me. I took Aaron Rodgers. Wow. Uh, a lot of quarterbacks have come off the board. And I, I know we talked to Joe. Aaron Rodgers is playing football this year. That That's the way I look but at it. But is he playing it for the Green Bay Packers? And uh, – Matt Stafford just taken. So do you took your two quarterbacks back to back, Kramer? I took my two guys. I think I'm going to be done with quarterback. Rodgers, I'm going to sneak in a late round stack uh, to have something a little bit different. Or maybe I go with the. I have multiple potential Aaron Rodgers stacks. I have a I have the Cortland Sutton potential stack, and I need to get a Packer for a Packer stack, but. I mean, again, we're, we're drafting in the eighth and ninth round. Uh, Antonio Brown was just drafted. I would have liked to uh, steal him there. Uh, who else do I like in this spot? Not Michael Pittman Jr., not Brandon Cooks. Quarterback situation so bad. Oh, man. Melvin Gordon? You know what? No. I'm going to go uh, I'm gonna go Kenyon Drake. I, I still think Kenyon Drake, uh, to me – Again, Gruden brought him in for a reason. I think that's a uh, a storyline and a drafting strategy I'm going to keep sticking with, especially late. If they brought in this running back in free agency, it feels like it's for a reason, right? We got to get our shit going mentally. Could Kenyon – I mean, Kenyon Drake could have a tremendous amount of – like we're talking, what, 
He's, he could see six to eight targets a game if they're getting their ass kicked every week. And they don't could... seem to like uh, – they like Josh Jacobs, but it, it's clear they needed something else, and it could be in that pass-catching role. I think I think if um, – for the same reason I like Darren Waller, I think the way that Derek Carr throws the ball and, you know, what he is good at, it, he's pretty – He's not a bad quarterback at getting the ball into his teammates' hands, and that happens to be the tight end and running back a lot. So if you believe Kenyon Drake was brought in to be that pass-catching back, to maybe help out in the shotgun game, an area that Josh Jacobs just hasn't gotten there for John Gruden yet, I'm going to have – you know, I think Kenyon Drake's a fun guy in a season long as well. When I'm, when I'm drafting in the FFPC, Kenyon Drake's going to be the kind of back I'm looking at. If I, maybe I didn't draft running backs early and I just need to take a lot of bullets – He's definitely one of the pass catching backs that I have pretty high up because if Josh Jacobs does get hurt, he could evolve into even a bigger role, but he has that carved out role already, which gives him such a nice floor. Melvin Gordon goes, uh, Nicole Hardman, David Johnson, Cole Beasley noted anti-vaxxer, LaVisca Chenault goes, Michael Pittman Jr., Brandon Cooks does go. Kramer, help me out here. What should I, who should I be stacking with Kyler? Now that uh, obviously DeAndre Hopkins is off the board, but the rest of the pass catchers pretty available right now in the spot. Who should I be looking to grab? Uh, it's, I mean, Arizona, it's so hard to know what, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is there. Kirk, th- there's obviously a problem with Kirk, right? Like it's, it hasn't ever come. I think I would just go the rookie. Honestly, I would take more. That, that would – maybe Isabella, that's I, – I don't know. It's a mess because DeAndre Hopkins is going to scoop up so much of it. A.J. Green? No, A.J. Green's done, right? Yeah, I think so, but uh... – I mean, if you want to be contrarian, maybe you take A.J. A. Green and someone else. Ah. Rondell Moore, that could be pretty interesting. You know I'm not super-duper high on that offense this year. Yeah. And, you know, one thing that if I'm a Cardinals fan, the city of uh, Phoenix having a lot of success right now, too. That's a little scary. They don't know. (laughs) They have not been there recently, so maybe not knowing how to act. But I do worry, right? This is an offense that is pretty simplistic. And if defenses have a lot more time this offseason to kind of get in there, and how often do we call them Cliff Kitchens? Yeah, which is offensive to Freddie Kitchens now, uh, offensive uh, play <laughs> caller for the New York Giants. Uh, Cliff Kitchens can very well, I think, show his ugly head. I get the angle with Kyler because I think his his legs give him this like thirty point potential every week, and I, I understand DeAndre Hopkins, but everyone else on that team, I think it's going to be so variant. To your back to your point, because you're almost on the clock. It's best ball. Take the guy that can have the biggest game. Take the guy with the biggest ceiling. You don't know. You don't know what the rookie's going to look like. So to me, that's the guy I'd take. The variance yeah. there is worth taking in best ball. I like that. And you're going to hate yourself when you take AJ Green and he's just hurt before <laughs> the season starts. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to draft him where I pick 117. I, I guess I can wait on Rondell Moore. I probably don't need to draft him here. Um, you know who I, I'm keep talking myself into? And, Who's that? And maybe I'm crazy. Gabe Davis. You got eight seconds. Little, uh, I'm a little ahead of his ADP here, but I think, you know, that Buffalo offense is pretty exciting, and he seems like the guy, you know, obviously outside of Steph Diggs, but Gabe Davis could really establish himself as that true number two. And uh, I'm on the clock now. Uh, you know, this is, I this may work out poorly because their offense may not be all that needy because the defense is so good, but I love Curtis Samuel. He's coming to a, a, a former coach, for, so obviously they like each other. He's going to be used, and he's going to have a quarterback at least to start the season that doesn't give a fuck about throwing interceptions. So Playing fast and loose. I love this, and, and I'm also going to snag a, another running back here. I'm going to reach for him, but Jamal Williams. Mm. Uh, I, again, I think I need guys who have roles. He's only my third running back to go with Trey Sermon and Christian McCaffrey. And you watched him play in Green Bay, Sean. This is a guy that just hits you in the mouth. He knows how to pass block. He can catch the ball. So, in a weird way, you kind of have to figure out a way to get Swift on the field because Jamal Williams is a three-down back. And, again, you talked about the old school coaching. Anthony Lynn, Dan Campbell, what do they want? They want a guy to hit you in the mouth. They don't want a DeAndre Swift. They didn't draft DeAndre Swift. 
They didn't bring – running backs are one of those weird taste things, right? Everyone likes different wine. Anthony Lynn, what does he like? He likes guys that can jump over pads, and he likes guys that are going to hit you in the mouth. Can you block? If you can block, you're playing for you're playing for Anthony Lynn. Can DeAndre Swift block? I don't think so. I did it, Ryan. I pulled the trigger on Ron Dale Moore uh, before him. You're going to go in reverse order, get you guys caught up. Evan Ingram, Baker Mayfield, Jamal Williams, like Kramer said, and he also got Curtis Samuel. Uh, Kirk Cousins, T.Y. Hilton, I had Gabe Davis, Naheem Hines, A.J. Dillon, Zach Moss, Trey Lance at 113. Tyler Higby, who I'm high on uh, because uh, Gerald Everett no longer there. Devontae Parker, always a nice PPR play there. And Tony Pollard, Matt Ryan, Joey B. We should caution the audience. Tyler Higby and Jared Goff were BFFs. That's also true. So... They, they had a connection. We'll see what Stafford does when he comes um, to the, uh, to the program, Ryan, when we were out, uh, hanging out the wind, got ourselves, uh, no. got ourselves some, uh, nice, uh, futures tickets. And of course, if, uh, if they start rising in value, maybe we'll head over to propswap.com. Although I can't imagine myself unloading my, uh, Eagles super bowl future at 50 to one, even if they start out red hot. Um, but of course, if you're looking to buy or sell sports book tickets, you got to go to propswap.com and you got to use that promo code. SGP get up to a $500 deposit bonus. Are you kidding me? And again, the best thing about prop swap is you can make money without winning your bets. That it doesn't get any easier than that because all you need to do is buy a ticket, buy low, sell high, much like the stock market, mm. but this stock market hashtag Dejans only very Dejans only a friendly. Uh, honestly, it's the number one thing. Like any one of your, any one of your smart, like anti gambling friends will try to use on you is that gambling is different from the stock market. Cause they're all binary outcomes. Not anymore, bitch. If you want to get out of a position, you can get out of a position. Prop swap, baby. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, we got a couple U.S. Open futures I, I, I played. <laughs> we'll see if I they skyrocket in value and have a chance to uh, hedge well, out. I, I mean, are there anyone looking good right now? I got to uh, I got to look at the updated uh, leaderboard. Uh, unfortunately, uh, let's see. I better keep an eye on this draft. Yeah. Keep an eye on the draft, Ryan. I'll, I'll get a little uh, live update on the uh, leaderboard. I do have Xander, but um yeah, I don't. I don't think I'm looking to. Unload well, since it. Sean picked uh, Darnell Mooney, Henry Ruggs the third, Irv Smith Jr., Gasecki, Trevor Lawrence, Jared Cook, Mister Connor, a guy we like for Arizona to have Terminator. a role. Uh, w- Will Fuller going pretty late here. Best ball guy. He's suspended, so he's going to play. Uh, that's a that's a nice one. And then on the swing back to start the twelfth round, Devin Singletary of the Buffalo Bills, who, as we discussed with Adam. There is something to the fact that you can get a potential starting running back for a top offense. We know, Sean, that points for running backs generally correlate to the success of the overall offense. So to have a running back, I know the running backs in Buffalo were probably an anomaly last year to that, but to have either a Zach Moss or a Singletary so late in these things, I know it feels weird because you're not really, you have no idea who the guy is. And last year, like both of them didn't do much. But that I would I would expect that to regress. I would expect to see more goal line touchdowns, uh, things like that. So I don't mind taking either one of those guys. Ryan, uh, looking at the quarterbacks available, are you letting uh, Tua's six interception practice throw you off from drafting uh, Tua in fantasy? So on this show, I'm I'm the the sympathist, which I I don't I don't love him. <laughs> I'm just simply of the camp like I need to see more uh, with him. And, yeah, that's not a good look. The way he throws the ball looks very tentative. So, uh, yeah, nothing nothing great. I mean, I'm certainly not downgrading him, but I don't think I'm drafting him a ton, Sean. So I'm not – I would say it's probably not – all. you know, the six inter- interception practice probably not altering his position on my board. I, I love it uh, in classic, like, millennial social media. Tua went – Tua, the other practice, had six touchdowns, zero interceptions. And, of course, it gets upvoted. It's like, see, he's good, guys. Look, he had a good practice. Everyone's Fucking making such pussies. a huge You're on the clock, deal Sean. about practice. It's practice. That's what I want him throwing interceptions. Shut up. You can say no. you, sh- you shouldn't throw. We get it. It's practice. Everyone here knows what practice is. We talking about practice. Practice. Uh, I'm going to go uh, massive upside again and uh, draft the Jets rookie. Elijah Moore. I 
again. Oh, you're getting swayed by the, the beat reporters talking about the rave reviews. <laughs> uh, maybe it's just the Zach Wilson hype from uh, the Joe, oh, Joe I Dyson. got sniped. Oh, Gus Edwards off the mm. board, Ryan. You had him. Uh, you, you know, I, him? you know, I like Gus Edwards. I, Dobbins is not going to get all the carries there. I, yeah. I absolutely love that position. Uh, I'm kind of scrambling here. And, and you know what I'll do? Because I don't. Uh, you know, I don't feel 100% great about it uh, with Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to take a third quarterback, Fitzmagic, to go with McLaren and Curtis Samuel. So a little double stack McGillicuddy. Uh, I got another pick, don't I? You know, I, I don't feel great about my, my running back depth, and so I'm going to reach a little bit probably and take Mr. Alex Madison. Dalvin mm. Cook, you know, he had a great healthy year last year. Uh, I don't, you know. Knock on wood if you're with him, Ryan. And look, that offense is just made to run the football. So if he if he pops in, he's a guy. He's a best ball dream because he's immediately the starting running back. Kramer, I'm also uh, drafting a third quarterback again. Uh, massive uh, rushing upside. Give me Justin Fields, the Ohio State product. I I I mean, listen to this. Give me your quarterbacks. Let's hear your Kyler roster. Murray. Bait. Okay. Jalen Hurts oh. and Justin Fields. Oh. These guys all have massive rushing upside. Agreed. I love the pick, Sean. Thanks. I took three white guys. Well, I don't even know that. One of them can't even chug a beer. <laughs> Fitzmagic and uh, Stafford can, though. Yeah, this is a different team. No, oh, this is totally different. I mean, obviously I've had shares of uh, some of these Eagles. And, and I've been doing a lot with the Fields, Komet, Stack, maybe even throwing in a Darnell Mooney there. Um, yeah. And as I look at my team, you know, I, I kind of slowly have, uh, I have five, five receivers, one tight end, four running backs, three quarterbacks feels like I need to just go down the path of just snagging pass catchers. I don't have enough right now. I'm going to need, you know, I was hoping to get nine. All right. Here, who has, uh, who's been drafted, uh, recently here, JD McKissick, uh, just goes two a goes Aguilar, Philip Lindsay, Justin Fields, Sterling Shepard, Marvin Jones Jr., Alexander Madison, and Fitzmagic, courtesy of Kramer, Gus Edwards, Danny Dimes. And uh, that'll that'll catch you up there. Sean, you, if he's still there, he probably won't be because he's on the top of the queue right now. But Jalen Rager in the fucking 13th round. Like, what am I – explain what I'm missing because I think the Eagles are going to have a shitload of fantasy points this year. Well, and Jalen Rager, I think, is going to get a ton of yards after the catch. Uh, Why wouldn't he? Yeah. I, I like – again, you know, people will just think I'm a homer, but I think there's a real boom potential it, with this Eagles offense and especially their the, you know, the way their defense is looking. I would also say this – if you want to get really cute for best ball, I think the true boom candidate is Travis Fulgham because it sounds like what they're going to do is put Fulgham and Devonta Smith on the outside, uh, Rager on the, uh, you know, in the slot there, the slot, How's the slot? when they go 11 personnel. And I think that uh, situation could be ideal for Travis yeah. Fulgham. And we're talking best ball. I mean, Travis Fulgham had a four game set where he was the best receiver in the league fantasy wise, production wise. Can he get back to that? No. I mean, we'll see, but no. he's certainly shown those flashes. So I, I, I just, that, yeah, I guess that that's the, but what I, it's not like, like who's been drafted, uh, which Eagles receivers have been drafted. What do you mean? Dallas Goddard and Devonta Smith. Devonta Smith. Yeah. I'm just saying we're in the 13th, 14th round and we expect this offense to at a minimum score a lot of points because the defense might be substandard. So the fact that the number two receiver or number three, if you want to call Goddard the number two, is still on the board. And, oh, by the way, he's a second-year wide receiver, probably going to take a step forward. I, I don't quite understand it. Yeah, new system. Certainly. I Simple mean, system, though. Yeah. But, I mean, clearly he doesn't need a complex system. But, I, but I do think, why you know, the wide receivers that struggle in the, in the first year, um, you know, I don't uh, – Rager had some issues, just continuity, injury, like things just made it harder. But je yeah. a lot of times it's like thinking, the thinking part of the game. And if he did just have that extra year and now a real off season, you know, I think anyone who you can't really judge the first and second year players after this past season, because it just, it was such a weird off season. I think we're going to see a lot of guys take big ass step forwards this year, steps forward. <laughs> 
Sam Darnold uh, goes. Traquan Smith goes. James White, Paris Campbell, Derek Carr, Tevin Coleman, Jonu Smith, Big Ben, Jamison Crowder, Rashad Bateman. Oh, my God, Sean. He's going to make it to you. I mean, you take Rager if he's there. I, I would, yeah. I mean, Dub Bears 33 is sitting right in front of me. A.J. Green off the board. Um, I brought him up when it was like 12 picks away, and he was still top of the queue. I, I yeah, I re- I would. I'll also take him if he makes it past you, Sean. He's not going to make it past Jalen Rager. Oh, goes <laughs> Ryan. You really know how to jinx a uh, a good fantasy football oh, draft. Fuck. Couldn't write this ourselves. Yeah, I'm going to go. I don't have a tight end yet, and I know. Uh, Belichick brought in two tight ends, but Hunter Henry has been my guy yeah, for a, a good, long time. He's a good player. I had him number one last year, Sean. And I'm taking him. Yeah, no, you made him number one. I went Gasicki, kind of, you know, keeping it cute. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I still think I, I understand they're going to run a lot of 12 personnel or, you know, he's going to be cutting into. But who do they have at receiver? Like, couldn't you make a pretty easy case that Hunter Henry's their best pass catcher on that team? Or Jonu Smith. I mean, you could argue the tight ends are the best pass catchers. By all reports, uh, Myers is starting to look good uh, as, as the top, you know, outside pass catching option. Uh, I am on the clock. You know, you, you brought it up earlier how much you like this guy. It, it was the number one pick, so I don't mind using a 14th as a handcuff, even in best ball. Damn Give it. me Chubba Hubbard. And then <laughs> that was a great reaction. And then I I haven't I want to make sure I get a single stack of Aaron Rodgers and uh, so tell me would you go Lazard or, or MVS? Uh, I'll go I'll go Lazard. Yeah, that's my instincts as well. So I'll, I'll snag Lazard here. Give me an Aaron Rodgers stack. Ooh, okay. So I, I'm coming up here again. Uh, what do I got? Hmm. All right, I got. Six receivers, one tight end, four running backs, three quarterbacks. So I'm pretty good on quarterbacks. Maybe could use one more running back and then just uh, receivers, maybe a couple more tight ends to round it out here. Trying, nothing's really jumping out at me. Jacoby Myers just went. Kadarius Tony. You could go with the, the Cole Komet uh, stack for your Justin Fields pick. Is that too early here? Uh. I mean, you don't pick for what sixteen or whatever. Yeah, I don't. I like Cole Komet, and I don't want him to get away. So I'm gonna. I'm yeah, you're playing. You're playing for the stack. So sure, you took him in the fifteenth instead of the sixteenth. <laughs> you look at all the value you didn't get. <laughs> Fucking nerds. All right. So I had Komet before that, uh, like Jacoby Myers, like I said, Brashad Perryman, who again is going to be the number one receiver probably. Perryman and Myers, both number one receivers. <laughs> and you were round fifteen, so. You could easily make a case. And then Lazard and Hubbard uh, off the board. Tariq Cohen, and before that, Gerald Everett. I, of course, had Hunter Henry. Jalen Rager broke my heart. A.J. Green, mm. Sam Darnold. And uh, that's what we're looking at here. Kenny Gainwell just went. Who again, I think is a late-round steal as well, especially. Eagles insider Sean Green. Well, with the, the Miles Sanders injury concern, the fact that they've gone out of their way to call way more screen passes, yep. way more, um, you know, Getting the running back involved in the passing game. Did Ferkser go? Ferk Daddy himself off the board. Deshaun Watson still here, Kramer. I, do, have you gotten your third quarterback? Correct me. Uh, I have. Uh, yeah, Fitzmagic. That's right. So Who? not taking, uh, not taking Deshaun Watson. Not in this one. Having Aaron Rodgers and Deshaun Watson on the same <laughs> team is just what if hyper they get, fragile. I, I mean, isn't that one of the options for the Packers? Ooh, wow, that is next level. Bring in a high character guy like Deshaun Watson. I mean, that would be awesome. You think if, the people of Wisconsin does, give a does, shit about a man who does gets Does Aaron Rodgers have a no trade clause? I'm sure he does. Yeah, because I would if I was the Packers, I'd trade him to Houston. <laughs> That'd be a send him to purgatory. Oh, that's... oh, you think we run things shitty? Fuck you. Enjoy Houston. Yeah. Bill um, O'Brien made that place better. I just you know, I get some of what his beef is, but man, I, I, I think he, I think playing in green Bay tough to beat it. All right. What are we looking at here? I, I gotta, I feel like I have to round out some more, more running backs, probably some, a couple running back bullets, couple, uh, 
couple receiver bullets here. Who do you like? Who do you like late running back, Ryan? Who am I? Who am I not seeing here? Uh, of the available, I know a lot of people are plucking Derek McKinnon because of the offense that he would play in. Uh, Ahmed from the the Dolphins, another popular play. Um, who's, who's the true backup for Saquon? Is it Booker? Yeah. Okay. Devontae Booker's the play there. I mean, I think a lot of people, uh, I've heard people talk talk up Ty Johnson uh, for the Jets. I'm kind of more of a Tevin Coleman guy. He's gone already. And then it's just, you know, you got some, some kind of high-profile handcuffs like Darrington Evans for Derrick Henry. Um, Boston Scott is an eagle that I would stay away with or stay away from fantasy wise. Todd Gurley's still out there. <laughs> still looking for a team. Todd Gurley. Yeah. There's a ton of running backs here. Not, uh... I, I would, if, if I, let's see, what do I have? I have? Five running backs, five running backs, but one's a handcuff. I probably could grab one more if there was one I really liked. Uh, Devonta Booker is, falls in that category, Sean. Um, I also, you know, Austin Eckler you, was your first pick, so do you maybe want to snag his potential backup? I mean – Josh Kelly? I don't know. Like, do you – it's one of those things. Like, that offense is going to be good, so the running back should, in theory, plug right in and be productive, but you just – you have to kind of know which – guy you think that's going to be and i i don't know who that i don't have a good read on who that's going to be for yeah them. and it sounds like their depth chart isn't isn't that set i'm, I'm just going to roll the dice with eckler who has had injury issues but i don't his his handcuff isn't clear you, enough for me to roll the dice you also have uh, a new england running back you could take another one and just you don't have to worry about which guy pops their head up that week i um, mean have you read much about uh stevenson because because he's a you know who knows but Sony Michel has had games for Bill Belichick, and he's still sitting there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I like the uh, I, I like the Stevenson angle better. I think. Okay. I mean, it, it, at least I think the fun thing about taking a rookie in these things is at least you don't know what he is. Yeah. Some of these guys, you know who they are, and and that might be bo- you. You don't really want to end up with the super boring guy in best ball. You want to end up with the quick twitch guy that can put up a massive. I mean, obviously you want a nice floor, but you want guys that can put up numbers. You know what I'm going to do? It. I'm going to take uh, Devonte Booker. Uh, I'm. I mean, there could be some games early on, especially in the season, where Saquon doesn't get the full workload. Oh, let me just sit up and say this because I've been pounding the table all episode about how running backs correlate to their offensive production. Sounds like <laughs> Mr. Green thinks there's going to be some offensive production. Boy, I was really dead set on taking a tight end here, but I can add to my stack potential. Give me MVS. Give me Deami Brown for the Redskins. I mean, a.k.a. the football team. I now have Fitzmagic and three of his receivers. I may have overstacked here. May have overstacked here. You know, I, I need another tight end. And, again, people think it's a homer play. But if Zach Ertz oh, is there, we- <laughs> why would I not draft him in best ball? I love when you say that. Why would I not? Yeah, what's what's – What's the what's the knock against Zach Ertz? I think he's gonna. He might not play this year. Oh, he's definitely playing. Why I'm, would he not play? No, I mean like he might not do. He's definitely not gonna be. When is he getting traded? Oh, soon. Or he's. Gonna You're be asking cut. me for the the other side. I think yeah. that's the the scary part is he goes to another team and doesn't make that team or something because he's washed up, and that's why the Eagles want to get rid of him. Nah. I mean, uh, why else would the Eagles want to get rid of him? Yeah, I mean, because he's expensive. I mean, that's really – like, he, he should be going and playing for a contender. Maybe I'd take the Arizona tight end, Max Williams, in the last round. Current uh, Currently ranked 456. I do need a tight end still, so don't, don't, but he's, give, he's don't give me all your – Don't give me all your bullets. Because <laughs> I only have one tight end. I went with Waller, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking I don't need a – I probably don't need more than two, maybe three. Pat Fryermuth, uh, Steelers, that could be kind of interesting – <laughs> that's such a great name. Yeah, really, it's a real tight end. Like you're at some like pub in Belgium. There is. A there's also some Dan, beer. some Dan Arnold chatter going oh, going around there. Love it. Dan Arnold is in what Carolina now, right? Yeah. <laughs> Those flowing locks of Dan Arnold. He could be Jack Doyle's uh, right hand man. Dan Arnold, <laughs> trusty side. Which, Dan by the Arnold. way, uh, the uh, I can't wait to to do the next NBA as the league turns. 
Oh, uh, what do you got? Well, I, I mean, we could talk about that James Harden flop when his oh. eye was grazed. <laughs> uh, we can talk about LeBron telling the league that he uh, he knew that all these injuries were going to happen. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it's like a fucking drama. Scripted. <laughs> also, uh... <laughs> Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our league. <laughs> Get a little, a little <laughs> days of our league with our buddy uh, Aaron Rodgers. Oh yeah, and his uh, his situation in Green Bay, wearing showing up for an interview, wearing a shirt saying "I'm offended." <laughs> Oh, shit. So All here's right. who I got. Kyler Murray, Austin Eckler, Chris Carson, mm. A.J. Brown, Keenan Allen, Devonta Smith, Hunter Henry, Damian Harris, Jalen Hurts, Kenyon Drake, Gabe Davis, Ronald, Rondell Moore, Elijah Moore, Justin wow. Fields, Double Cole Moore, Matt, Double Moore rookie, uh, Devonta Booker, Zach Ertz. I got three more spots left. And just uh, taking bullets right now. All right, I'll, I'll, running back. I'll also update. Uh, I have Aaron Rodgers to go with Matt Stafford and Ryan's, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Running backs, Christian McCaffrey, Trey Sermon, Jamal Williams, Alex Madison, Chubba Hubbard. A little thin there. Wide receivers, Terry McLaurin, DJ Moore, Cooper Cup, Cortland Sutton, Curtis Samuel, Alan Lazard, uh, MVS double Aaron Rodgers stack when he gets his ass back to camp. Deami Brown and uh, tight end Darren Waller. I have three picks left. Probably need a running back, a tight end, maybe one more pass catcher. Uh, the tight end situation has gotten gotten from bad to worse, Sean. <laughs> uh, there is not a lot for me out there. Okay, I I I feel like I should get another receiver. But uh, I'm trying to think who who could be. Oh, you know what? I I like this guy. I'm gonna throw him in the in the queue. Hopefully, no you, one takes you're Rashard on the Higgins. Clock. You're on the clock, Sean. You're on the clock. I'm gonna go Rashard Higgins. I think he, massive upside. Again, not a giant Baker fan, but yeah. I think again clearly that offense has shown a little bit of spark. Odell Beckham, nah, the guy just doesn't play. He'll figure out a way not to to play. And Jarvis Landry. He's okay, but he doesn't really have those, like, gigantic games ever. Uh, Rashard Higgins, I think, should be in the mix here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take uh, Ahmed for the Dolphins Ooh. as one of my picks. It could have a nice role. I, I, I'm a little thin at running back, so one more bullet, not going to kill me. And then I really need a, a tight end, so give me uh, Parham. Uh, we, we love him, former XFL superstar, playing for a good offense. Jared Cook, old as fuck. Yeah. Like it could be just a red zone target, but I need someone to back up Darren Waller. Okay. Ah, uh, what am I gonna do here? I'm on the clock. Round nineteen. Uh, yeah. And for those wondering, if Aaron Rodgers does get traded to Denver, I do have a Cortland Sutton stack for him. People so are worried about I'm, that. I'm waiting. I I did it. I took a uh, Ramondre Stevenson, uh, New England uh, rookie running back. So now I'm up to six running backs. A little high for me. Well. I mean, everything fell off the rails when you took the cheerleader. <laughs> so I got three quarterbacks, six running backs, seven receivers, three tight ends. Should be good to go here, and just and just you know, one more uh, bullet here, receiver. So what's the all right? So if you if you were me and you had Darren Waller and Donald Parham Jr., would you take a third tight end with this final pick, mm. or is that the safe move? I mean, Dalton Schultz is still here, which I guess he's uh, Blake, the guy in, in. Is he or is it Blake Jarwin? Yeah. Or sorry, Blake Jarwin. Jack Doyle, we've always enjoyed. To me, him a on fun one is Moss for Cincy. Uh, you know, maybe not the starter, but does have that rapport with college quarterback Joe Burrow. Uh, Tremble with Carolina. He's. I know you said Dan Arnold earlier. He's another guy. Dan with, Arnold's looking the part of starting court or oh starting no. tight end. That's but this, is reading. the tight end going to be used though? Probably not. That's why I wouldn't. Tight end is real is pretty thin, honestly, as a, as a position overall. Darius Slayton goes. So I'll catch people up here. Darius Slayton, Ty Johnson, Teddy Bridgewater, Cam Newton. I took Stevenson. Eskridge, Sony Michelle, Donald Parham Jr., Ahmed, Josh Reynolds, uh, Daryl Williams, Richard Higgins, Sean Jackson, Taylor, oh. Taylor Moali Cox. 
Who did you just miss, Kramer? I, I was gonna I wanted to grab Deshaun Jackson with my last pick. Yeah. He's gone. Stack with Stafford. Oh, just take two two Atwell, man. <laughs> Call him Deshaun Jackson Jr. Is that why they brought they wanted a good mentor for <laughs> yeah. For two two. Deshaun Jackson is not a good mentor for Deshaun Jackson. If you know Deshaun Jackson, it just doesn't. Uh, that's not what I would be doing. Uh, I mean, would you? T- but I, I think I have third tight end feels like a safer route. I just these guys are all trash. <laughs> that's why it's round twenty, Ryan. KJ Hamler. Oh man, he is on my he's on my late round bullet list. Another Aaron Rodgers potential Denver stack. I mean, you you look at his game log. He had a couple. Uh, he had like two games where Sean, it was like twenty fantasy. Travis games. Fulgham, right there. Come on. Take no, I, I maybe I'll take. Oh, him. am I am I am I actively jinxing again? Yeah. I'm sorry. Mari Rogers, another uh, another uh, fantasy bullet there for the Packers. Uh, rookie uh, receiver could be interesting. People are talking about him as like a uh, way to close out your draft. A little Amari Rogers action. Don't hate it. Tyler Lentz in the YouTube chat saying Rogers will be in Denver soon enough. Don't you worry. It's a Homer approach. <laughs> Got to get that Homer. Wayne Gallman, Ryan, friend of the program. Wished you a happy birthday. Is he going to come back for uh you think we'll get another Wayne Gallman birthday message now that he's a 49 Bay, Bay area guy. Uh, look, the, Here's the thing, though. Go go look at – tell me who's healthy in that running back room. Mm. It's Trey Sermon and it's Wayne Gallman. So, look, the Wayne train is not a, like, high-level athlete, explosive back, but we saw he, he had a little – he had a little bump to him. He got it done, and, and, you know, personal friends, so that's always cool. This is weird. I, I can't remember a best ball draft where both Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater went. Who is buying more shares – of this Denver quarterback situation, you're crazy. Travis Fulgham went, so nice, nice uh, work there, Kramer. Sorry. How do you spell two two? I'm trying to see if uh, uh, he's still T O T O. It's T U T U. Two two. Are you gonna me. snipe my stack? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you gave you told the people to draft <laughs> Travis is Fulgham. Warfare. Yeah, I'm not like you get that sweet 2-2 Atwell stack. Jordan Love goes for the Packers. No. Yeah. C.J. Uzma. He might not start even if. Yeah. Kendrick Bourne goes. I'm going to do it. Give me 2-2 Atwell. 2-2. Two, two. All right, I'm the last pick, dude. You have Mr. Irrelevant, Kramer. Who will it be? I, I just keep thinking I should take a tight end, right? Like I, I should be smart about this. I should take a tight end. Yeah, I mean, there's some interesting tight ends here. Um, I don't really have a late like this late. I, mean, of a I would hot ju- I would tight probably tight. go Jack Doyle. Of the tight ends I hear. Yeah, or maybe Cameron Bright. I mean, you could certainly talk yourself into Cameron Bright. You know, coming back. Although Brady you know just what? loves I have. I already have a lot of Panthers, so let's do this. Let's add another one. Uh, it, I'll be really pissed if I have zero shares of Dan Arnold. And and he has a good year finally. I feel like we rostered him last year a number of times. Really wanted to believe in Dan Arnold and that Cardinals team. Their air raid just didn't use the tight end. Uh, so hopefully this is different. Again, was he not brought into the team to fulfill a role? Yeah. That fucking I, I, Ian I, Thomas I, couldn't. Yeah. Oh, Ian Thomas. That was brutal. Garbage. All right, Kramer, read off your roster. All right, final answer, quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Matt Stafford, running backs, Christian McCaffrey and Chubba Hubbard, Trey Sermon, Alex Madison, Jamal Williams, and uh, Ahmed from Miami. What's his first name? Salvin? Salvin. Wide receivers, Terry McLaurin, DJ Moore, Cooper Cup, Cortland Sutton, Curtis Samuel, a lot of, a lot of Redskins on this team. Alan Lazard, uh, Valdez Scantling, Deami Brown, and then tight ends, Dan Arnold, Donald Parham Jr., and Darren Waller. Yeah. Um, who do I got? Kyler Murray, the Kai God, Austin Eckler, Chris Carson, A.J. Brown, Keenan Allen, Devonta Smith, Hunter Henry, Damian Harris, Jalen Hurts, Kenyon Drake, Gabe Davis, Rondell Moore, Elijah Moore, Justin Fields, Cole Komet, Devontae Booker, Zach Ertz, Rashard Higgins, 
um, Stevenson, and then two two at well. I, I need to know how many. I want to know the absolute eagle share. I, I want someone to go do that. Oh, we, it's through the roof. We've done ele- we've done eleven now of these. Uh, are there any teams where Sean has less than three eagles? Well, you know, I'm very high on the offense this year, Ryan. And, you know, I've been following. I love it. I've been keeping up with all the local news, as I know you follow all the uh, beat reporters. I'm eating all the beat reporters shit. So you're always up to date on the latest news. Shout out to uh, Patrick Fisher, friend of the program, for sending in that drop. Good to see that Patrick's got some time on his hands. (laughs) Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Make sure you get your app entries in. Download the app SGPN. Get in your uh, NBA Finals pick for the NBA Finals free roll for your chance to win a thousand bucks. That is closing Friday, June eighteenth, aka tomorrow. If you're listening live, and we will be back later tonight, Ryan, to uh, to crank out another podcast. NBA playoff picks have to address uh, my Sixers collapse and uh, whatever else is going on as the league turns. As the league turns. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. See you in 84 days, football. Kramer, let it ride.